If we want a low carbon future, then that means we need a revolution in the way that we use and generate energy. And the RSPB has always said that we want that revolution to take place, but in harmony with nature. Well, climate change is one of the biggest threats that wildlife faces, and the RSPB has been campaigning for uh, the UK and for the world governments to try and commit to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So it's only right that the RSPB tries to play its part and reduces its own carbon footprint through its own activities. We started thinking about this wind turbine about 10 years ago and the reason why we did that was because we'd set ourselves a target to reduce our own greenhouse gas emissions by 3% per capita every year. And so this will make a huge contribution for us to try and stay on that low carbon path. And the electricity generated by this turbine will be equivalent to about half of all the electricity that the RSPB will use across all 127 locations where we work. So we think it's a great step to try and um, reduce our carbon footprint. So the RSPB has engaged in over a thousand wind farm applications over the last five years or so, and we're concerned about the impacts on important species and important habitats. But in the end, we've only objected to about 4.5% of those um, applications. And we do so because we want that energy, but at the same time, we want it without causing harm to wildlife. Obviously, putting a windmill up at RSPB headquarters at Sandy one had, we had to do an enormous amount of assessment of the potential effects on, on wildlife and particularly birds. We've done a whole season's bird surveys on this site here. We also had a control site um, on some more RSPB land of similar habitat. This is the type of uh, uh, survey work that we do on a, a multi windmill site somewhere in Scotland rather than just a, a single windmill here. Through that monitoring, we established that certain species of bats, uh, noctules and pipistrelles do occasionally use this area uh, at wind speeds of about sort of between two and five um, meters per second. So what we've decided to do is to try and reduce the likelihood of impact at the times when those bats are active, which is usually around dawn and dusk. So we're going to introduce a mitigation plan so that the wind turbine itself is shut off half an hour either side of sunrise and sunset at wind speeds lower than seven meters per second. There is a small cost in terms of uh, reduction in the uh, generation of electricity, but at the same time, we think that's the right cost to pay. Oh, it's great to see the RSPB having women here on this site. I've been a member of the RSPB since I was about eight and having been an ecologist all over the world and actually seeing the impacts of climate change on the Antarctic, the Arctic and, and other parts of the world. And it's great to see the country's leading conservation organisation demonstrating that um, wind turbines are part of the solution of reducing our carbon emissions and also demonstrating after all the surveys we've done, which we've done in collaboration with RSPB, that this turbine is bird friendly. The challenge of climate change affects us all, so we think that everybody, not just businesses and charities like the RSPB, need to play their part, which is why we're encouraging our supporters and members of the public to try and switch their electricity supply so they come from companies such as Ecotricity, which generate you know, large quantities of their energy from renewable sources. And so we're delighted to be partners with Ecotricity, uh, and um, every member that switches to join up with Ecotricity, um, will, there'll be a small donation that goes to the RSPB. And and that's incredibly valuable for us because then we can recycle that fund straight into our conservation work.